Hey, what's going on guys? I'm Nick Gray and this here is the OnePlus 10 Pro. Now, by now you've probably watched your fair share of reviews of this smartphone because it's been on the market for about a month now. And honestly, I probably should have gotten my review out as soon as that embargo lifted, but I wanted to give this phone a little bit extra of attention simply because it's not perfectly obvious what OnePlus is trying to do with this device. Now on the surface, the OnePlus 10 Pro looks like another iteration of a flagship smartphone that could probably go head to head with the best flagship smartphones that are on the market these days. And on paper, it does check all of the right boxes. But like many of its competitors, it does fall short in a few key areas, which I'm gonna get to in a little bit. Now, for years now, OnePlus fans have flocked to the brand because of the value proposition that their smartphones offer and also that great software experience. But in 2022, both of those points aren't really massive selling points for OnePlus phones anymore, but they still give the phone a slight advantage over the competition. At $899, this isn't the cheapest flagship smartphone that's on the market, but it is $100 less than its most notable rival, the Galaxy S22 Plus from Samsung, and it is $170 $70 less than last year's OnePlus 9 Pro. But to throw a wrench in OnePlus' strategy this year, Google released its Pixel 6 Pro, well, technically last year, for the same exact price, giving buyers that are looking for a great value proposition and also an alternative to Samsung another option to look at. The good news is that the 10 Pro has both of its competitors beat when it comes to performance. While it may be running the same Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 with 8GB of RAM as Samsung's flagship smartphone, OnePlus has managed to keep the chipset on the inside of its phone a lot cooler than its competitors. Now, most benchmark numbers are going to show that the Galaxy S22 Plus and the OnePlus 10 Pro offer nearly identical results. But the cooling system inside of this phone gives it an edge, allowing it to max out its power and performance for longer, which definitely is going to be appreciated by anyone who's looking to pick up this phone for mobile gaming, especially if you're playing some of those games that push the phone to its very limits. OnePlus has also optimized performance of the phone for specific games in order to reduce performance peaks and valleys when the chipset does eventually throttle under heavy use. Now, in my personal case, I did notice a difference while playing the game Wild Rift, with frame rates remaining consistently higher than they would with other flagship devices running that same chipset. That being said, these performance and optimizations are on a game by game basis, which means not every title is going to be given that same treatment. But in terms of day-to-day -day use, the phone's performance is actually quite stellar. Even though some might complain that there is only an eight gigabyte version currently available for sale, but OnePlus has promised that a 12 gigabyte variant is gonna be coming with 256 gigabytes of storage at some point in the future. But honestly, I don't see the point. Multitasking on this phone works just fine, though having double the storage would come in handy if you're someone who records a lot of videos or is planning on installing a lot of games on this phone. One of my favorite things about the OnePlus 10 Pro is the fact that it can charge from zero to 100% in just 35 minutes, thanks to the 65 watt charger that's actually included in the box. That's right, in 2022, a flagship smartphone here in the US still comes with a charger in the box. And OnePlus truly does mean it when they call this fast charging, since this phone can charge about at double the speed than most other flagship devices here in the US market. And when it comes to battery life, it actually outperforms many of its competitors as well. When we stack this up against other devices running a Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, this outperformed all of them with this 5,000 milliamp hour battery, delivering a full additional hour of screen on time, even when compared to the Galaxy S22 Plus. And in my personal testing in day-to-day -day use, it typically left me with about a 20% charge at the end of a very long day. Some of the improvements are also credited to the brand new LTPO display that's being used on this phone that offers variable refresh rates from one hertz all the way up to 120 hertz, giving you an incredible user experience when you're playing games, watching movies, or even just scrolling through your social media feeds, but while also dramatically reducing power consumption when you're simply reading static content on the screen or nothing is moving on the display. When it comes to the software, out of the box, this phone is running Android 12 with the latest version of Oxygen OS. Now, there has been a little bit of controversy lately with Oppo and OnePlus announcing that Oxygen OS and ColorOS are now sharing the same code base. 
you still get a couple unique software features that are exclusive to OnePlus devices as we've seen in the past, but there's definitely no denying that Oxygen OS on this phone definitely feels a lot different than what many of us have come to love from OnePlus over the years. That being said, I still prefer this UI over what Samsung delivers on its devices. It's just a shame that it's a bit heavier and a little more involved than what it used to be. One notable new feature on top of Android 12 is the OnePlus shelf, which is essentially a customizable widget screen that appears when you swipe down from the right hand side of the screen. If you're a fan of widgets and simply don't want them cluttering up your home screen, this is definitely a feature that you'll enjoy since it does give you the best of both worlds. Personally though, I did disable it just after 48 hours since it was consistently getting in the way when I was simply trying to swipe down to open up the notification shade on my phone. I'm sure we can all agree that OnePlus smartphones, their flagship devices specifically, have typically had great displays. And the 10 Pro is no exception here with its Quad HD Plus 6.7 inch display that has pretty amazing color depth at 10 bits with 1300 nits of peak brightness that delivers great viewing angles in addition to amazing outdoor visibility. And OnePlus has gone a little bit further than usual, calibrating the display at 100 nits and 500 nits to ensure that the color accuracy is as accurate as possible depending on the brightness level of the display. It definitely looks really good, but it's hard to say if anyone will truly notice the difference in color accuracy at the different brightness levels when compared to competing devices. But as good as the display is on the smartphone, I am going to have to detract a couple points from OnePlus for using a curved display here, which adds unnecessary glare and also makes it just a little bit harder to type on than it should be if they were using a flat panel here. The good news is the display curve isn't as dramatic as what we've seen on other OnePlus devices in the past, so at least they're moving in the right direction. I have to say that taking pictures with a flagship OnePlus smartphone has gotten significantly better over the last couple of years, and I was honestly really impressed with what OnePlus delivered with last year's 9 Pro. So it's a little bit disappointing to say that this phone here is only really a half step up over its predecessor, at best. The main camera is still that same 48 megapixel sensor, and we also have a 50 megapixel ultra wide camera again as well. The difference this time around is that the ultra wide has a new lens with a 150 degrees field of view, but the sensor itself has been downgraded. Now that wider lens is definitely a lot more fun to play with since there's very few cameras on the market from smartphones that have a 150 degree field of view, but it's actually been separated out into its own dedicated camera mode rather than having it as one of the zoom options in the main camera screen. And they didn't even give you the option to record video with that 150 degree view as well. The downgraded sensor isn't much of an issue when it comes to taking shots in daylight and time, but the smaller sensor is definitely quite noticeable when taking pictures or even capturing videos at night. The zoom camera isn't an upgrade either, featuring the same 8 megapixel sensor and 3.3x zoom setup as last year. Needless to say, the 10 Pro's rear cameras aren't much of an upgrade, if anything at all. They've tweaked the image processing just a little bit to improve dynamic range, but you'll have a really hard time telling these shots apart from anything captured from last year's 9 Pro. The one camera that was upgraded is the selfie camera, featuring a brand new 32 megapixel sensor that doubles the resolution when compared to its predecessor. The S upgrade here is definitely noticeable with the added detail in every shot, and especially in low light conditions, since the sensor is a lot larger, allowing it to absorb a lot more light. I still wouldn't trade it in for a Pixel 6 Pro when capturing selfies, but it can definitely go head to head with the best that Samsung has to offer. That being said, I still need to point out that OnePlus still doesn't think that we deserve 4K video capture from our selfie camera, something that I completely disagree with. But if that's not a priority for you, you'll definitely be happy with the pictures you can capture with the new selfie camera on the 10 Pro. After using this smartphone for more than a month now, I have to say I still have mixed feelings about it. It's incredibly powerful and I really love the fast charging speeds and the battery life that this phone offers, but it still has its fair share of flaws. That being said, I still think it's one of the best Android devices that's on the market right now. And when comparing it to Samsung's Galaxy S22 Plus, it's definitely a much better buy. That being said, I'm still not sure if I would recommend this smartphone over the Pixel 6 Pro, which also costs $900 as well. That's a decision you're gonna have to make on your own. 
And that's gonna do it. Let me know what you think of the OnePlus 10 Pro down in the comments below and whether or not you would buy this device over other flagship devices that are on the market right now. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.